Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to the Irrelevant Information Society podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> Why are you putting so much question mark on that, man? Because iTunes is not where it did and podcast, I believe, is originally. You know what? I'm not going to go any further because I'm pretty sure that's wrong, too. Welcome, Dan's and Dan's. Oh, yeah, how you doing, David? You, you keeping up? You tried that food that we suggested? Anyway, I'm your, nice. I'm your host... It was David. <laughs> I, I'm your host. Ron. I didn't even get that right. <laughs> Come on, man. It's been like a month. <laughs> God damn, this is a mess. Let's try this. <laughs> this is a here. disaster. <laughs> Part of being the host is introducing the thing and then introducing you guys, which means. Well, shut up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. Everybody ready? <laughs> Welcome to the Re- Irrelevant. This is the intro. <laughs> I will punch you, Richie. <laughs> I'm the Irrelevant Information Society, where we do all the high school level research to questions that pop in your mind and then are rightly forgotten because the information is irrelevant. I'm your host, Ryan. I'm not going to go by my username and make those jokes because that would make it even more weird. We have Richie here. Hi. I'm going to punch him later for making this more difficult. And we have Andrew here. Hi, how you doing? I'm going to kick him the nards for making this more difficult. Today... We have, I suspect, two topics, but the main topic was proposed by Richie, um, and it is either having to do with cigarettes or alcohol. He may have flip-flopped and forgot what he was supposed to be <laughs> researching, but basically how they become age-gated and how that came about. I can think of a bunch of interesting questions to ask to guide that sort of research. Let's see what Richie found out. Richie. <laughs> so, like he was saying, uh, I was researching why the age increased for smoking cigarettes. And it's not as interesting as you would think. It was mostly because uh, they were done targeting kids. They're trying to get away from that. Weird. So, and then my, my follow-up questions really on that is like... Because, like... Tobacco, I guess, smoking really came about big with, like, 13 colonies in high school. Remember, we're only doing high school-level research here. This is not a big brain program. This is just a jumping-off point. Uh, You, like, we're told, uh, like, 13 colonies really is cash crop sort of thing. Like, the new addictive thing people stopped fucking doing cocaine for a second (laughs) in Europe because, hey tobacco it was it's it doesn't shorten your life as much <laughs> and it could smell nice depending on the blend was there a set age when it started in that like uh no they were uh, just targeting whoever they could in fact the commercials in early uh cigarette smoking uh claim that smoking was healthy for you i do remember seeing stuff on like the movie uh Good Night and Good Luck, which is a really good movie about something completely different. It's more like uh, news accountability and stuff. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. It's really good. And um, when they're doing like their Marvel commercial, it's like, hey, did you know that people who smoke these are more likely to have like interesting conversations? <laughs> like it was from the news because it was like an op-ed show. Uh, yeah, if you read this means that you also must smoke these. And here's interesting statistics that you're also more learned. Uh, you read the paper. You, you travel more. Like, you have friends. Everybody wants to be you, 70s kid. Well, actually, let's see, during the Red Scare. So, 50s kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, they you know, promoting not necessarily health benefits, but also social benefits like if you smoke yeah (laughs) you're rad (laughs) you'd be all those cool people it'd be cool if you did smoke yeah come buy some cigarettes now will ya (laughs) cause yeah I, I understand like nowadays how it's not very profitable everything is being everything about what somebody does and what they could take part in is very super analyzed here in 
2020's Year of Our Dying Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, like... Yeah, the social norms for smoking kind of shifted from cigarettes to marijuana now. Yeah, because marijuana has more, like, you know, get more health benefits than smoke, you know, cigarettes did. Not only health benefits, but uh, more conversational inspiration. The only thing that harms you in marijuana is if you're smoking under, like, the age of 20 or something, you get, like, memory loss. Yeah. Um, I would probably say that, and this is hypothetical for the mouth, I have done no research to back this up, but I would probably say that if you had any sort of scar or breathing issues anyway, any sort of smoking via marijuana or, like, tobacco is just going to make it worse, but marijuana might complicate it, but then again, I'm sure that if you're have so many issues that marijuana is a suggested they probably have you take a inhaler or something else to help counteract mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend has like immune system disease and then like it's it's weird because there's pills to help with the diseases pills to help with the side effects for the <laughs> diseases <laughs> and then pills to help with the pain yeah, really? made and pills to help Make sure, sure that you're not super sleepy because of the thing, like there's pills to help all the other pills. This yeah. is a fucking cocktail of like she yeah. has to do like five. There's, there's a lot healthier and better ways to help people get better with kind of taking pills all the time yeah. too. Yeah. And then a lot of the stuff is outdated. Yeah. It might do more harm than good, but in the long run, it helps a lot better. Yeah, I I think. So my follow-up question for you, Richie, that's right, you get homework, <laughs> is, like, earlier time. Because, like, like I said, I'm interested to have, see the idea of it going from when it actually started to become a boom in colonial times and when, like, whether or not there was an age or it was just a rich person thing, which... Is likely to be the thing. It was a cash crop, and hey, it's exported, and aren't export things nice and super? I'm pretty sure uh, cigarettes were cheap enough for any anybody in the public. Well, yeah. like, I mean, for specifically <clears throat> rich people. Well I, well, I would say that, but if you think about, like I said, specifically thirteen colonies time, still under British rule, and that's the only way that they're letting people. I can definitely see that in the Americas, in the colonies, it being super cheap. Like, mm -hmm. again, 15-year-olds passing around the <laughs> tobacco <laughs> pipe. Um, however, because it is an exported good controlled by, depending on colony, the Dutch, English, or Spanish, they would probably, in Europe, it would probably be more tightly regulated because that's now, like, how they're paying for these expeditions and how they're keeping this money and stuff so it would really be a question of whether it's age gated in the countries that are making more of a profit off of it than necessarily in the colonies yeah another thing is though too is back then they didn't have all those chemicals on the tobacco either like they do now yeah, yeah that's true it was straight tobacco nowadays it's like tar. They, they mix it with tar like and some uh, other, other stuff to increase the addictiveness and then they're like cool instead of not making them so addictive we're just gonna put a filter at the end mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i was thinking last night because this is that that whole thing is sort of like um the the drinking like the 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 prohibition amendment for it's like hey alcohol is outlawed mm -hmm. and it's part of our constitution and then the amendment right after this, like, uh, takes these back seats. That one doesn't take. <laughs> and I was thinking, like... You guys are going to drink on your own anyway? Uh, <laughs> could you do it and pay us? Yes. Yeah. Well, because it made me think, like, Congress and Senate apparently knows how to pass amendments. But the fact that we have amendments saying that the previous amendment doesn't exist means that they don't know if they could legally wipe Wait. out. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's insane. It's a lot easier for them to be like, hey, uh, the one previous doesn't exist than it is for them to be like, let's just erase that one. And if we make a new one, we'll call it like 25 point 
one. Or yeah. like, we'll, we'll, we'll put yeah. a little asterisk next to it and just notate that the previous amendment was this. Quotation marks yeah. 25. I also find interesting that, like, new age smoking, like, vaping and stuff like that has been all but eradicated now. And I heard it was from the cigarette companies. Yeah, I heard that it was a bit of, from uh, cigarette companies, um, and also a bit from people uh, trying to get more unregulated Mm -hmm. doses. Yep, it was uh, causing popcorn lungs. Which is a terrible, terrible thing for your lungs. Yeah. Well, I Another mean, thing is a lot, lot of the batteries and all that start exploding <laughs> on some people too. Yeah. yeah. They were so, so overheated they dispersed. Yeah. I don't doubt that popcorn lung is terrible for human beings. Popcorn ceilings are terrible for a building, so <laughs> of course, definitely <laughs> it makes sense. Unless but you're watching a movie, was, popcorn uh, is terrible. <laughs> Marlboro was pointing the finger like, hey, look over here. People are dying from this. Yeah. Kind of focusing the blame on these vapes. And like, hey, we're losing massive profits here. What can we do to get these off the market and start making money again? You know how... remember, tobacco is safer. You know how Australia... <laughs> Don't get tobacco today, kids. <laughs> you know that Europe has like... Hey, look, there's these cigarettes, and on the back it's like, This is your lungs! <laughs> uh, yeah, like, has the horrifying they pictures. To advertise uh, what it would do to you, or like, that it could cause bit, like, what, damage to your body. What, yeah, what. I, I kind of. What does that legislation that told people to do, like. I, that'd be another thing to look at. What's the cause and effect of, like, how did. Like, how did the cases be like, oh, by the way, tobacco made this way is bad. And then, and then, like, the legislation and, like, how long that took. Because, once again, we're also in the U.S. here, so our high school level of education is, uh... I'm sorry, we do middle school levels of research. Maybe I should refrain that. <laughs> um, but... We're the smartest sixth graders you've ever met. I'm yeah, sure. <laughs> Who can't do fractions. I can do fractions. Well, fuck you. <laughs> I'm a cook, so I have to do fractions. I can't do fractions as good as he can, but I can do fractions. Well, you're a high horse of macaroni over there. <laughs> you got the elbow macaroni, you got the rigatoni, you got the fettuccine. <laughs> and he has to step away for a moment. Yeah, he has to go back to his family among the trees. <laughs> we are actually dragging him off a set. He is done. Welcome to the new show. Yeah. The Richie and Andrew show. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Good that's day. It. So you can stick. Ah, outro. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that was a food. <laughs> so, there's more questions I have, but you're also a busy person cleaning people's cars. Yeah. Legally for money. <laughs> uh, it's illegally right now, but yes. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm like, all right. <laughs> Business license pending. It's just, I mean, do you need a business license for freelance? I think for certain things, it depends on the business. It depends on how much you make. Oh, and you're probably right under the bar. <laughs> Well, I will pay you just enough to get over the bar so you can start panicking to fix my car. I'm actually... So are we talking about Greek drama? So, uh, I guess we'll take a break when the food gets here and then I'll talk about what I've learned. We will have soothing sounds of us chewing, so stay tuned. I will do my best to make sure that that is not the thing that happens today. <laughs> but it was so interesting last week. Why wouldn't we do it? Oh, goodness. I guess it was a month. Andrew, I hope that you're learning about what the expectations are for research here. <laughs> <laughs> I, already, I already researched some stuff. But oh, okay, good. Because it's probably... It wouldn't surprise me if I just have to research a secondary topic for everyone, or if I just do one just in case. I research. I started. I had like the single player and multiplayer, what we talked about last time. Oh, okay. That's the one of them. And I also started doing some cooking stuff research. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I started also after researching single player versus multiplayer, I started doing coke. <laughs> 
YouTube? Research. <laughs> <laughs> cooking research. Um, You're just going to keep with co- cooking. <laughs> it looks just like flour. It's really hard. All right, you know that pizza we had last time? Cocaine in there. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> I don't and welcome think. Welcome to the Relevant Information Society, where we don't think. Smooth brain, no think. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm gonna walk out now. Up, uh, more food for me and Andrew. Fifteen wings just went up. Uh, but yes, I will actually go ahead and stop it right here, and then we'll continue because food is closely on its way. Fun questions. <laughs> and back. Right, so in part two, jackets versus coats with a wink towards hoodies. So, first I uh, just went with the definition, coat is considered the outer gar- garment with, with sleeves covering covering at least the upper body. But I also found that onesies and <laughs> and uh, jumpsuits are considered coats. <laughs> I can see it, though. Yeah. They have... They have They're, uh, because basically, from what I get, is coat is originally considered just the outermost layer. Um, uh, the original... Uh, uh, re- the word originates from uh, the uh, 1250 to 1300s. Um, and a translation of a French word, uh, Cote de Armes, which I just pronounced in a Spanish light, not a French, so that's butchered. <laughs> but it's, uh, and it was a light garment worn over armor uh, with the heldric or coat of arms on it. So, really, what it comes down to is that uh, there is also something where uh, the coat, it's either that, the garment worn over the armor, or related to chain mail, which is a coat of metal or chains. Because um, I, I, my brain started thinking, like, there has to be, like, coat of arms, coat of armor, the fact that those two things kind of intersect and are around the same period, like, cannot be... There has to be a connection there. Um, I did not really find a strong connection, but in my mind, it's not too much of a stretch because those who could afford to wear armor on the battlefield um, and the fact that the coat was the tunic shirt that went over the armor so it wasn't glaring in the sun entirely, and may have most likely had your family insignia, the coat of arms, on it. <clears throat> You're basically then saying, uh, speaking that uh, a rich family, due to the armor, um, a family that has a tradition and or coat of arms was also used for as a profession or organization, so either a family of means or a mercenary or soldier group being displayed, it's very much a almost caste system sort of like thing where it's like a coat is for the richer people sort of thing uh, there. Um, uh, and basically coat... <coughs> in general, originates to mean the outermost clothing layer. So, the shirts that we are wearing with no layer underneath is technically a coat. Hmm. (laughs) Going back to the things. Um, And jacket. Jacket is a short coat. (laughs) That usually, this was from definition.com, that usually opens in the front. Which brings the question, what fucking type of jacket opens from the back? back. (laughs) We call those easy access jackets. Well, the thing is, you're not incredibly (laughs) wrong because when I Google back open jackets, it just looks like dress coats. 
with a window in the back, like <laughs> like a backless dress that itself is a coat. And I was like, that just doesn't seem like it's useful in any like, so capacity. So were they uh, sexier in the images? <laughs> were they elegant or were they kind of like bulky trying to prepare yourself for the winter? Um, well, I think they're mainly supposed to be elegant, but also on that thing is... Uh, apparently, looking at my notes, somebody talked about different types of jackets for different situations, and bed jackets came up. Bed and, jackets. And bed jackets are basically a thin, they look like a thin button up shirt, like a Mr. Rogers. Oh. Like, so, so someone made a. Ja- uh, like vest. Oh, like like a... indoor vest, sort of, where it's like really thin and buttoned up. Like but technically it... pajamas, I guess. No, because you're still wearing a shirt over. Hmm. It, it, it's it's another yeah. layer, but it's like a very thin cloth layer. Like why, that's why, why did anyone think of making a bed jacket? You can put like a regular thin jacket on and go to bed in that. Uh, yeah, and that that's, that's what I don't understand because that that's why I keep bringing up Mister Rogers because that's the without just showing a picture, that is the way that I would describe it to anybody because he takes off his coat and then he gets like a thin coat in this case a jacket a thin jacket like his indoor jacket yeah, but in on. this case the indoor jacket apparently is a bed jacket <laughs> like that's <laughs> the name for a bed jacket uh, all right <laughs> so yeah no that, that's just gonna piss people <laughs> like um once again this is uh Middle to high school level research with just that's googling and that's taking putting a straight jacket on. <coughs> oh, look, I'm ready for the winter. I'm ready for bed. <laughs> no, well, you put a straight jacket on, and then if you put a, another jacket on top of it, the outermost layer is a coat. <laughs> is now the jacket. Actually, that sort of went away. Um, the, yeah, the, the, the dis- <laughs> there goes, there goes Andrew. He, he's had enough. <laughs> um, there's a it's now a sort of a disambiguation because now we associate more of the style of the cloth or of what a jacket or coat looks like rather than its placement. When even going back to Middle Ages, because the origin of the word jacket, French, is from the 1400s, 1425. And thinking of red coats, if they're yeah. called red jackets. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it wouldn't surprise me if the vest part was a jacket and then the coat <laughs> over it. Um, but actually, no, because the fact that a jacket is a short coat, and yeah. usually the red coats uh, had tails that went like all the way down. Um, but so the jacket is kind of interchangeable for all of us English speakers. <laughs> like jacket and coat, we're just like meh meh. Um, but I also would think that makes sense because I remember one of the questions I had when looking at this is like, how do we know? Well, the reason we know like the difference is or is just because it's interchangeable and we know because it actually doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it hey, really does. This is a coat. Thank you. Well, it, it's, Thank you very much. It's like, hey, wear your thick coat or hey, wear your thick jacket. That's a cool jacket you got. It's a coat, you asshole. Well, get yeah. right. So ba- basically, it's just the length of the out- outer garment would depict whether or not it's jacket or, <laughs> or a coat. That's it. That's all there really is to it. Um, because in the, it's originally a French term, jacket, uh, meant to a small, lightweight tunic like a t-shirt. The jacket is more of a working class because if you think about it, it lighter cloth material they couldn't afford that much shorter mm-hmm. so it's not really going to be able to, to cover that nimble. much and there's no armor uh for for them to like cover over yeah they had to have <coughs> movement about them so they couldn't be bulky yeah. uh here's something that's also gonna fuck uh, that might fuck with you leather jackets when do you think leather jackets like or leather being used for jackets really started to come on its own Ooh. Richard? I have no idea. Uh, so leather jackets became useful and started becoming like necessary and made in the 1900s. Really? 
first pilots. <laughs> because the Oaken Cockpit leather jackets were thick enough and insulated enough that it was how they were able to keep warm and stuff while flying the planes. When did it take off? Or, sorry, pun. When did it, when did it start to become popular? <laughs> when did it take off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the plane? Jeez, <laughs> yeah, late to the pun. Well, when do you think that it actually started to take, like, get popular? Leather mm. jackets. Silly. I'd say 1930s. Yeah, 1930s, 1940s probably. You're a little bit too over. You're, well, you're double over. You're a bit too over. 1920s, with the advent in use of the motorcycle. Hmm. Because the motorcycle being a high-speed uh, vehicle that is open to the elements. Mm-hmm. So 1920s, when the first motorcycle, when early rock and roll culture started to take off. That's when leather leather jackets started to become less of a necessi- necessity for pilots and more of a popular luxury uh, kind of lu- luxury item. sort of item. Yes, hmm. I mean motorcycles themselves are fairly that's much weird a that luxury it would item. Be, uh, like that because that's right when the Great Depression was going on. Well, yeah, I. So part of me is wondering, in that case, that would lead the question of how many pilots after the Great Depression maybe were, like, out of out of the military that then, mm-hmm. and then, like, they just had their leather jacket. Maybe they passed it down, and their son, being disassociated, disenfranchised, or whether because of the Great Depression, just, like, biked, <laughs> like, with the leather jacket, and started to come from that. <laughs> like the, there, there are connections to be made here, but uh, it's a uh, what what I've generally found is this is all under the coat family, <laughs> um, and then hoodies. Uh, hoodies are ba- are defined as hooded sweatshirts, mm. hooded sweaters, <laughs> hooded jackets, <laughs> not coats. <laughs> Coats have their own hoods. Yeah. Hooded jackets. Hooded jackets. Both jackets don't have a hood. So the earliest version, um, I didn't actually do research too much research. Actually, okay. So it originates in the 1780s, uh, specifically more likely to do uh, having to do with monks and monasteries, with the hooded cloaks, mm-hmm. um, and and, the, and that like. Um, however, it didn't necessarily become popular till I believe, if I can pull this off the top of my head, around the 1930s, 1940s, mainly in shops, in, in, in sweatshops and clothing shops, where a lighter variant, uh, like a fairly sturdy jacket, where a hood was necessary for those working conditions. Um, I think it was... Is it Detroit or Chicago? There was there was a clothing company that like started to use it, that their workers started to use it, that it sort of just took off from there. Um, but yeah, that's it. Be it. It was. It went from piety to working man sort of thing to now just um, everywhere. Um, <clears throat> and that's where my research started tail off. So yes. Coat, jacket, hoodie. All the same thing. Yes. So the, the it, it's weird because like you could definitely tell you could say that a jacket is a coat. But you can't say that a hoodie is a coat, but you can say that a hoodie is a jacket. <laughs> weird. Although technically you probably could say all of those are coats because if you want to go down to the weird the base layer of information it's the outermost layer (laughs) (laughs) that's really all it comes down to Uh, and it goes as far back as the 12 let's see what was the code again um 1250s 1300s medieval renaissance eras Hmm. that was a pretty interesting topic (laughs) i did not think i would be interested in so you definitely surprised me there so yeah it's I mean, there's definitely more information to gain, like I said, to anybody who's listening. 
why but also <laughs> why are you listening but also like you can take it up from there as you can tell my research sort of fell apart around hoodies um as i believe and I, after 9 p.m yeah uh, <laughs> as i was talking to richie i think maybe recorded earlier maybe already deleted by this point but it's like this is this show is really just promoting those weird questions you have popping your head at work like or you're laying in bed at 2 a.m. and you can't sleep, and that dumb thought comes across your brain. Like, why are... And you're like, I'm going to spend the next hour thinking about this. What, on a, why are radio frequencies fighting each other when you go from state to state when there is, like, an unlimited <clears throat> band of, yeah. of, of energy and, and frequency when part of that answer is that the government holds on to, like, one-third of all frequencies for its own use... But it's still like, why? <laughs> um, but then you realize, well, this information doesn't really affect me in any real sort of <laughs> distance, and you leave it out. That's that's what we're we're here to do. We're here to do the the high school essay writing level research of those stupid questions, so you can continue to not think about it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know if you giving rest yeah. to be unrestful and even then if you are in high school and you are using this as a cheat sheet I used dictionary.com the encyclopedia Britannica and the part about the leather jackets was actually a leather jacket clothing company so I have no idea how on the ball they are but the fact that they did have established dates does lead them some credence and credibility also depending on what sort of class you're taking i would actually just push for the coats and coat of arms thing because i do believe there is something there and this is just a jumping off point go get that extra credit anyway <laughs> i have a question people might be thinking why did video kill the radio star um <laughs> probably because it was fucking ugly <laughs> uh, it, that's not unlike that Family Guy thing, where it's the guy of silent movies ended up having that terrible voice <laughs> when they went to talkies. Um, anyway, I think we're uh, near 40, we're 43, near 45 minutes. When this edited, it was probably going to get down to around half hour or so. So I think um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, next month, when we get together, it's Andrew. Andrew, what are we going to be looking forward to? Uh, most likely single player versus multiplayer. Okay. Um, so he'll, he's already said he's already started research on that. Um, depending on if we need more, I think we can supplement it with simple gaming pleasures. Basically, things that you enjoy that are more like in-jokes for yourself. Uh, so, Richie, just think of things that, like, you can do in video games that are definitely not the point of the enjoyment of the video <laughs> games. And then when you tell everybody, they look at you weird, but just things you enjoy. Oh, I, I got stories for that. Uh, you, can, you can go fucking enjoy killing chickens in Skyrim or getting fucked up by chickens in uh, Link. Link. <laughs> uh, how, how many panels can you run before the chickens get you? Yeah. Uh, or... Uh, Talking like my one of my favorite ones is talking about uh, things that happen in civilization as if it, as if it's actual history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's or, that's or even those little guilty pleasures of killing, like saving and killing towns and all that, and reloading them and doing it again. How many times can you kill an immortal NPC that responds every time you go to the town? <laughs> um, yeah, so. I think that's a pretty coherent episode. If, once again, for some reason somebody is listening and you just have a stupid, inane thought that is not, why is this th podcast a thing? <laughs> then we will also answer that question if you have it. We were bored. Also, coronavirus. Um, <laughs> uh, go ahead and leave your your question, your weird Social thing. Social security, tax ID, just leave it all in the comments. Yeah disavow <laughs> anyway you can go ahead and leave the question in the comments if uh you like this brand of quark and nonsense blood of your firstborn leave it all in the comments i'm not exactly sure you okay flowing your blood of the firstborn on the computer does not necessarily mean that it will show up in the comments remember i like blood because i'm greek and make me look young and vampiric and possibly vampiric <laughs>
Hey, if you like this type of stuff, please leave a like and subscribe. As the host, I can only disavow the blood stuff, but please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I do personally have a Patreon. I will be, as I said, using the money to help feed these people, which I have to, as this is part of the arrangement. Once this starts to become pick up a more thing, we'll probably get to a real contract of sorts. But until then, they're just in it for the food. <laughs> yeah. Not even the friendship. Just the food. Oh, he, I, I do it for a little bit of a friendship. I'm here for the food. Yeah, he's going to see his mom. He's like, I was going to see my mom, and now i got to tell her that to be I'm disappointed old. in two white guys for making you talk. <laughs> hey, you can only see his mom for the food. <laughs> is that true, Richie? Is that also that is also true? Okay, Richie is just all about the food. <laughs> <laughs> he his fridge is empty, and he needs to bump food off of people. Right. Well, okay. I think we're gonna just wrap this up. This is a relevant information society signing off. Um, ask yourself stupid questions. Later. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget Google, Control C, Control V.